we're going to be looking at magnetic resonance imaging. You have some nuclei that spin around an axis, just like a spinning top or the gyroscope shown in this animation. And the movement of an object that spins around its own axis but also moves around another axis is called precession. And another example would be Earth that spins around its own axis, but it moves orbits around the axis of the Sun. Normally, the hydrogen nuclei are precessing, but they are all randomly aligned. So they're all precessing in different directions. However, if you apply an external magnetic field, then the hydrogen nuclei will align along the direction of the field, but also process about the direction of the magnetic field. And the angular frequency of precession of the hydrogen nuclei in an external magnetic field is called the Lamour frequency. And the Lamour frequency is directly proportional to the flux density of the magnetic field. When a radio frequency pulse is applied, and this pulse has the same frequency as the Lamour frequency of the nuclei, then resonance occurs. And this means that the nuclei absorbs the radio pulse energy and as it gains energy, it moves from a low energy state to a high energy state. When the radio frequency pulse is removed, the nuclei immediately relaxes or returns back to its lower energy state. And in doing so, it emits a radio frequency signal, which can be detected. And this radio frequency signal will have the same frequency as the initial radio frequency pulse that was applied to excite the nuclei to its higher energy state. And the time taken for the nuclei to return back to their lower energy state is called the relaxation time. And this will be the time duration of the RF signal that is emitted. So in MRI, it is the radio frequency signal that is emitted from the relaxing nuclei that is detected. And Different tissues will have different relaxation times and so you can differentiate between the different tissues according to their relaxation times. So hydrogen nuclei found in watery tissue will have long relaxation times whereas in fatty tissues they will have short relaxation times. There are five main components of an MRI scanner. You have first the large superconducting magnet, which produces the strong external field along which the hydrogen nuclei align and process about. You also have gradient coils, which varies the magnetic field across the patient's body and will look a little later on about why we need them. You have the radio frequency coil which transmits the radio wave pulses into the patient which are then absorbed by the hydrogen nuclei and they are then excited into the higher energy state. When the RF transmitter coil is switched off then the same coil can act as a receiver and it will detect the radio frequency signals that are emitted by the relaxing nuclei. And these signals can be sent to a computer which can process 
the signals and construct the image. And the computer is also needed to control the gradient coils and to control the radio frequency pulses that are transmitted into the patient. If we didn't have the gradient coils, then all the nuclei in the body will precess at the same Lamore frequency due to the uniform magnetic field that is produced by the large superconducting magnet. As a result, all the relaxing nuclei will emit the same radio frequency signal. And the radio frequency receiver coil will pick up these signals. However, the exact location where each signal came from will not be known. So the gradient coils are needed to vary the magnetic field strength across the patient's body. And that means that the Lamour frequency of the nuclei will also vary linearly across the patient's body. So that means only a small volume of the body will be at exactly the right frequency for resonance to occur for a given RF pulse applied. So only those nuclei with those frequency that matches the frequency of the radio frequency pulse that's applied will absorb the RF pulse and be excited to the higher energy state and then can relax back into the lower state emitting a radio frequency signal that can be detected by the receiver coil and hence you will know the exact location of where the radio frequency pulse originated from within the patient's body. However, this process will have to be repeated to cover the full range of frequencies across the body. So it can take a very long time to construct one image. So the long scan times can be a problem, especially in emergency situations. However, MRI is non-ionising because it deals with radio waves and it has excellent soft tissue contrast, which is better than CAT. However, its imaging of bone is not good. Also, it cannot be used if patients have a metal implant and that's because the metal may heat up due to the magnetic fields. And also it cannot be used if patients have hot pacemakers because the magnetic field may affect them. And also MRI may not be suitable for people who suffer from claustrophobia and it can also be very noisy. And here are some scans of Daniel's brain.